the way that came together is what this whole show is going to be about. And it is fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Almost stunning. Dark Star, why? Why did they do it? That's the only question that matters here, really. Why did the PGA Tour agree to form a partnership, really? Let's not call it a merger. It's not what it is. A joint venture, I think, is the term I prefer. Why? Why'd they do it? Well, there's one. There's only one reason, really, and we're going to get into that right now. The only one reason that would make somebody do what they did so quickly and so so antithetical to everything they've been saying. We hate those guys, all that blood money, all that stuff, all that vitriol over the past year and a half. And yet here we are. The reason why is simple. They're out of money. The PGA Tour is out of cash. Now, did they wait to the last minute? No, you can't wait to the last minute to run out of cash. They're running out of cash. It was an arms race, as James uh, J. Monahan famously said a year ago, a year a little bit ago. If this is an arms race with the Saudis, well, we're, we can't win that. They, they have unlimited money. We don't. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what happened. They forced the PGA Tour live, forced the PGA Tour to come up with quadruple the money for the designated events and the PIP money to keep guys from jumping ship. And that was it. That's all the PGA Tour had in the bank. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing changed. Their ratings didn't go up. Uh, they don't have more revenue coming in from anywhere. They're out of cash. Simple as that. And the way that came together is what this whole show is going to be about. And it is fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Almost stunning. And we can go back to our show from Masters Week where we laid it out, the plot to save global golf. And it it it's came true 100%. <laughs> pretty pretty much 100 would you say is that fair i'm going to go to you for the timeline did were we 100 percent right, well, on it with our show back in, in master's week in all honesty it was shocking looking back that yeah 90 to 100 percent of what we said well it was in in today's world of accuracy we can call it 100 uh, percent. Yeah, yes i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna go True. right into a name that a lot of people aren't talking about ed Hurley. yeah where'd this start where did the plot to save the pga tour and Therefore, save yeah, so, global golf. Where did it start? Now that we know that enough details from this announcement, where right. did it get its beginnings? Well, Ed Hurley, who's an M&A attorney, uh, a member to Augusta, lo and behold, uh, he's really, I think, the guy behind the scenes who said, "Hey, Jimmy, you know, because everybody hears, everybody's talked about Jimmy Dunn. Hey, Jimmy, I need you. I need you to join." What PGA time are we talking Tour about? Board. What time frame here are we in? We're talking. We're talking November. So we're only. No, nah, before about that, that's when they made the announcement. Oh, that's when they made the announcement. So we talked to him at the end of the season. October. The Let's just say October of 2022. Right. End of the live season. End of the PGA season. They went. We're in. He he said to himself, "I'm in trouble. I need an ally. I need right. a guy." Time out. Time out. Ed Hurley is the chairman of the policy board of the PGA Tour. Yeah. He is also, as Darkstar said, a member of Augusta. He's also a very wealthy guy as vice chairman of arguably one of the largest merger and acquisition law firms in the world, right? Wachtel, right. what's the name of the place? Wachtel, uh, Wachtel Lipton. So very successful guy, Wall Street kind of M&A guy at the top of the firm, vice chairman, member of Augusta, chairman of the board of the policy board of the pga tour that's who we're talking about his name is out in the press it's, you can all look it up ed he's, ed yeah. hurley okay go dark go go dark but, but more, and more behind the scenes and let's face it unlike jay and rory a high iq guy who who after the live season the pga tour season ended last fall he's like oh, we're in a lot of trouble i'm gonna need an ally so this is where he contacts Jimmy Dunn. Trouble. Really we're running out of money. We're running, we're running, out, of running money. out of money. We're going to be out of money. Here's the issue. We're going to be out of money. Correct. And so, as an M&A guy, he knows cash is, you know, is king. You never run out of cash. I can't negotiate with nothing in the bank. Correct. Yeah. So Correct. 
as I said, he gets to Jimmy Dunn. He gets an ally on the board. So Dunn's announced in the late fall. He joins the board in January. And they, they, they look let, at the Let's give numbers. our audience the dates. Let's give our audience the dates. November 15th of 2022. So Liv is just ending its season. PGA has been well over. November 15th, 2022, the PGA Tour announces, public information, go look it up, that Jimmy Dunn, another m and titan, so to speak, uh, is going to be joining the policy board of the PGA Tour. What they don't tell you is who invited that guy and why. They don't get into that at all. And it, you know the announcement comes and goes. Nobody thinks twice about it. But now we know that Ed Hurley he handpicked Jimmy Dunn, who obviously is a good friend of his, at least in business, if not both business and personally, to join the board January 1. Now, in that invitation, Dark Star, what, let's not skip over that. Ed, M&A King number one, says to Jimmy, M&A guy, King, Prince number two, hey, I need you. Why do you want me on the PGA policy board? Why do you think? What do you think he says to him? He's going to go, because you know the players, and when the shit hits the fan, you're going to have to smooth things over with the players. It was about a 15-second conversation. He's like, what's going on, Ed? Well, yeah. we're out of cash, Jim. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. And these two guys, you know, the number of deals they've done in 30 years, it's like, oh, crap. All right. Well, that's a, that's okay. What do we need to do? What, what are you thinking? Here's what I'm yeah. thinking. <laughs> Yeah, well, here's what they're thinking. In January, they both sit down and they look at the books. And the well, he told him that in November. When he, he told him that in October when he invited him to join the board. Why do you want me to go and do that? I'm a busy guy. I got a lot of things going on. I, of course, I'd love to be on the PGA Tour, but I love the PGA Tour. I love golf. I'm president of Seminole Country Club, one of the well, nicest places true. on the earth. I guess what I'm saying is that first meeting in January, they sit down with the other board members and they look at Jay and they're like, Jay? You have until Augusta to show increased ratings, find other revenue streams, or we're going to have to make a deal because we can't wait till we're totally out of cash. So lo and behold, that's what happens in January. They have these events. The ratings don't go up. They're bleeding. They're hemorrhaging cash. And I would say, and lo and behold, the announcement was made June 6th. The, the year the announced date, joint still, venture the announced the joint venture june 6th the exact year later to the day from, to the day to the day from liz's announcement no so no from back, the day that mickelson announced he was going to play live first event correct. in london exactly. june yes. 6 2022 first. mickelson did that june 6 23 they announced a joint venture and to my way of thinking that got my attention. So B team says that's a tip of the cap to Phil Mickelson. So Phil, that's not an accident. They could have done it the fifth. Right. They could have done it the seventh. They could have done it right anywhere around there. But somebody it wasn't the reason that for the timing. But somebody said, "Hey, you know what? It'd be elegant to do it on the sixth because Phil was so meaningful to us. It's a tip of the cap. It's a slap on the back. It's a that, that a boy. It's all of those things. It's a bottle of champagne for Mickelson. It's we now can." assume without any doubt that he stands in good stead with live with the piff with uh yasser al rumayan the governor of the piff who's the big hitter here we'll get to him um that phil's very well regarded in that circle which is important for phil but it's obviously important for them too okay so that is june 6th that so you I, I love your point about the january to uh early april time frame so he has one quarter one quarter, one business that. quarter to get it going and show some improved cash situation here in our spreadsheet. And if you can't, then we have to change directions uh, starting yeah, so, in April. So two, quick, two quick things. To finish the timeline, they talked about the talks have been in the work for seven weeks. As we know, about seven weeks ago, there was this little tournament in, in Augusta called the Masters. And that's where this they finally realized this isn't working. We are going to have to put together a deal. Well, they okay. plotted that all along. It was part of the plot. Now, for, I, for the I show, think, for the show, let me, the, let's get it in yeah. here now while you're on the topic. Uh, no, I'm not interrupting Dark Star. I'm getting him directed at something he's skipping over because these 140 IQ guys do that all the time. They skip over stuff because their brain says, I already know that. Well, our audience doesn't know this. 
So we said at the show at the Masters time, in March 29th, we put that show up here on Thinking Man Show. Go watch that episode. It was an awesome episode, not because of us, but because of the, the, the content that was in it, that the meetings were already happening. We said that Augusta was going to be the place where this all really started going. But there was a meeting before the meeting, and we used that exact phrase. Did we not, Dark Star? Yes. The meeting before the meeting had to be February or January, we said in that show. It's there. It's on tape. And now we know that that's exactly correct. Who was having the meeting before the meeting? Jimmy and Ed. Jimmy and Ed. Jimmy Dunn and Ed Hurley were having the meeting before the meeting to say what you just said, Dark Star. Jay, we can give Jay how much time? I mean, he's not going to fix it. Come on. He, the, you know, the greatest guy and the greatest CEO in the history of Earth couldn't fix this. It's a failing audience. It's a bad demographic. We can't fix it. So he's not going to do that. But let's give him a little time. And in that time, we'll start to put together our ideas and concepts and how this could possibly work and how we're going to pitch it to the PIF because they're the only ones that have money. It's the only place to go. And they seem willing to throw it at golf and they'll be happy to do that probably. So where should we, you know, really get this at Augusta? Everybody will be there. So we'll call the head of the RNA, the head of the USJ, the head of the PGA of America, and anybody else that we really need to get involved here. We'll get them. To, we'll give them a heads up that there's something crucial we need to all discuss at dinner on Sunday night or whatever before the tournament. We're all going to get together and have a very closed door session and chat so that everybody's on board. Is that probably what happened, Dark Star? Yeah, I, I would say absolutely. And, and it was easy to have a nice closed door session at Augusta because it is a lot of pomp, circumstance, tradition. <laughs> the whole place and is like, closed up like Fort Knox. And the whole place is closed. Up. It's a fortress. And yes. let's, There's know, no media running around. What do we mean by that? The media. There's not going to be anybody with a camera getting in on your action because this is super yeah. secret when it comes to golf world. Nobody's going to bother you. Can we do this in the Jones, you know, room? Yes, off the wine cellar. Yes, down there in the basement. Why don't you go down to that basement wine cellar dining facility we have down there and use that? Yeah, that's perfect. It's a perfect spot to do this because these guys want to do a deal. They're not going to do it in a, in a van down in the right. alley. They're going to do it right. in an appropriate place. And by the way, the last thing I'm going to mention timeline-wise, if anybody who ended up in that room was at all thinking that, well, I still think we can live without the PIF. When Honda pulled out a few weeks earlier, we just lost a, we just lost a huge world car maker who could give us yes. whatever we wanted. Uh, don't skip over that detail, yeah. 140 guy. Honda yeah. pulled out of what? Honda dropped their sponsorship. Of the? Know, of the PGA Tour. Of the Honda Classic. The Honda Classic, in, sure. So in South Florida, where they'd been the sponsor for? 20, 20, 25 years. Sponsor. They're like from like 82. I long would time. Say. Long, I long, had, long PGA Tour sponsor pulled out altogether. Did not help to. Jay's case for, for no. raising cash. No. Right. So, so so it's officially done. So all the principals get together at Augusta, which was seven weeks. To hatch the plot. The, the kingdoms are there. I would love that language that we used back on that episode, the plot to save global golf. The plot. The kingdoms are all there. There is a wrinkle that we didn't get correct, apparently, which is interesting as all get out, which is very interesting. So uh, now that we know all the kingdoms were there and we know who the, the movers and shit, the first mover was Ed Hurley. It was his idea um, because they're running out of cash. So to Ed, it's a no brainer. We have to get capital. This is not even interesting, really. I'll bring in Jimmy. I love Jimmy. He's going to be a great help on this deal. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll get the other guys to agree, blah, blah, blah. We need the majors on board. And sidebar... What, as far as I've seen, who's the only other entities that have really re got kind of like a sidebar press release that on the day that this was announced last Tuesday on June 6th, who came out with a little bit of a, a press release statement? Two entities that I'm thinking of off the top of my head that I saw. Well, I think the DP and Pelly, but they're part of yeah, it. Yeah, they're part of it. No, no, no. Unrelated. Well, unrelated. No, no. The USGA and the RNA. Both came out with statements like, this is good for global golf, essentially, is what they said. Yeah. So they were already on board, and they threw in there, maybe somewhat reluctantly, maybe. Um, but that's what happened. So all the kingdoms had this all plotted. And remember, this was a very small group of people that were in on it. Well, 
I think the RNA and the USGA, for them, it was a relief. It's like, oh, God, now we don't have to really, we don't have to start giving out special. Oh, yeah, exemptions. they were on board. Yeah. Now, maybe the they PGA were, of America wasn't invited to the small table at Augusta. Right. That's possible. You didn't really need them, but it, you know, probably they were. But who wasn't invited? I hope we can pivot here. I don't want to leave anything on the table, but quick pivot. Who probably, now that we're looking at the deal and the way it's shaped up, who wasn't there? at Augusta, at the small table in the wine cellar, having this discussion led by Ed Hurley and Jimmy Dunn? Well, tomorrow sports. Tomorrow sports? Tomorrow. Excellent, Dark Star. You were on your game. Yeah, I mean, well, and I think they're in trouble because the players are angry. A quick aside, obviously the players. When I saw Justin Rose walk out of there, he looked like an eight-year-old who just had his lollipop taken away. He oh, was. Yeah. Well, look, we know we love those role-playing exercises. So what yeah. was going through Justin's mind at that moment in time? Justin. Justin <laughs> thinking, Justin, whatever, I, I passed up 60, 70 million exactly. dollars. Exactly. They and offered me 50 million and you SOBs, you mother. I can't believe you did that to me, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Sergio in the bunker in Saudi Arabia last year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's spending all my money. While I'm not there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and and I, uh, Ricky, I don't think I don't think Ricky is at the Canadian, so he probably wasn't at the meeting. But he probably was. He probably was just punching holes in his plaster wall. Maybe so. I think they've given him. Uh, he got a little bit of pip. So did Justin Rose, but not as much as. Wow. Well, yeah, it's. You know, yeah. and Phil's going to see all those guys, and Phil's going to say simply, guys, <laughs> we talked about this. You, yeah. you didn't discussed. believe me. You listened to Jay instead of me, Phil. Yeah. Who's got your yeah. back? You know, I do. At least you guys got to play for $20 million, you know, for a year and a half. At least you got that. Uh, you know, uh, I, we wanted all you guys. We had room. We had 48 slots. You all got an invitation to the table. So... So Phil comes out looking like, you know, the greatest yeah, guy on earth. Right. And the irony of the whole tomorrow sports thing is you're going to be playing more golf. Because the last thing, as, as we've talked about with speed, he doesn't want to play more golf. You're going to be playing more. You're going to be flying into South Florida on a Sunday, on a Sunday morning or excuse me, Sunday night or a Monday morning to play in some electronic game. And you don't own the franchise. I've just been looking, did a little research on that tomorrow sports. All these celebs, and that's how they're going to market the tomorrow sports. So I think that's the the entity that is hurting more than anything. Because I think the live t team concept, even though, yeah, the one thing I do will say that I'll have to give you some credit for is I think live will eventually have to change their team concept to regional. Whether they're going to, you know, they're going to have names, the, names, team, yes. well, you know. Cam Smith well, will the be, name, the brand name matters. Obviously, you don't right. you don't want to call you your car, you know, snail. The Australian team, and they're going to have to just be the you know the Australian aces now, and they're going to have to be the South African whatever. Let's hope they hire okay. a good marketing company to do the yeah, names. They, they I mean, need to hire a real. Marketing it's kind company. of a no brainer. It's not you know, live yeah. Australia. It's pretty simple. Live yeah. Australia. Live Asia. Live, <laughs> live yeah. Ireland. It's simple. Do <laughs> if you want to throw well, in some soccer stuff, fine. Live Asia United. Okay, I like that a lot. Live Asia United Golf Club. Fine, fine. But the people, the fans are going to call it. I'm rooting for Live Asia. I love it. And Hideki's well, we can, on the team. Yeah. Now, you know, Hideki Matsuyama is not in our show notes, but <laughs> Hideki, right. uh, you go back to our Hideki show. Yeah, he passed up 300 million. Well, that's a bullshit but, figure. I, excuse well, my language. That's a that's not true. That it was not that much. Right. He's not that big right. a deal. Um, and they already had guys. They were already yeah, underway. He, he was a figurehead that was a lot. Um, he, he's big in Japan, and they want Japan. So he's still going to go there, my opinion. I think he still joins Live. Why stay on the PGA Tour? It's all one big happy family. If he had some segue, I guess, if, if Hideki had some reservations based upon his reputation in Japan, where reputation is extremely important, and face and how you appear to your fellow Japanese citizens, if that was the reason, and maybe it wasn't, maybe it was, maybe it's just simply travel. He doesn't want to do any more international travel or whatever because of the kids and the family, all that. And he lives in Japan. So 
whatever the reason, now there's no reason not to do it. I mean, why? Why he could play both? He could play live and and a PGA Tour if he wants to. If they allow that, they probably will for certain players. But I think he should just join Live. Hideki, just get over there. They're going to give you a tournament. You can be the head of Live Japan team. It's awesome. It's all good. You got no problem with the majors. You got no problem with saving face and you know jumping over to Saudi Arabia. Um, blah blah blah. Although I think Japan is a big customer of Saudi Arabian oil. They'd have to be because they have no oil um, in a big country well, with 25 million uh, people. We're going to have to do a follow up show on all this. Yeah, we quickly. will. We will. All right. So I, where I we left wanna, off? Well, go I, ahead. I'm sorry. I go do want to leave off with. So you're you know you've got Ed Hurley, you've got Jimmy Dunn, who's really the figurehead to this in in the media and the press because he knows all the players and he's smoothing it over. Um, <clears throat> so the big issue is. We talked about, you know, this all happened at Augusta. How are they going to go forward and actually make this, you know, official? And this is where, in my opinion, all of the what, – what people don't realize is Jay Monahan is just purely, you know, like I said, the figurehead of figurehead. They told him what to say because it's the guys at Seminole, it's the guys at Augusta, and it's the m a Wall Street guys. Well, they Ed – uh, yeah. They ultimately run the show. That's the point. You're, Ed Hurley invited Jimmy Dunn. In October of 22, maybe even September, who knows, but they announced it in November and Jimmy needed to think about it. It's more commitment from him, but he was probably ready to do it and happy to do it. But Ed always intended, Ed Hurley, he always intended to send Jimmy Dunn as the consigliere. It was never, never going to be, in fact, Ed is sitting there going, who am I going to send to the PIF? Well, I can't say Jay. I mean, this is the scene from, uh, what's the Mel Gibson film? Uh, Braveheart. Where the king, great king, uh, what is it, Longlocks, is trying to say, who can I, who can I send to meet with Mel Long Gibson's Shanks. character? Yeah, Longshanks. Long Shanks. <laughs> yeah. Who can I send? I can't send my son. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> who can I? The, and he sends the princess because uh, yeah. you know he might kill her. Who knows? And which would be fine with the king. And that's Ed. He's like, well, I can't send Monahan. That's ridiculous because the, the the governor of the PIF, Yasser Al Rumayan, uh, Rumayan, excuse me. Um, is a sharp as hell guy, sharp as a tack. The chairman of Saudi Aramco, the world's largest, is it the world's largest company by revenue? I believe it's the world's largest public company. I do know for a fact that it's the world's most profitable company. I just read that. He's the chairman. It's the heart and soul of Saudi Arabia's revenue. Let's get real. And Mr. Al Ramayan, Ramayan runs it. He's the chairman of the board. He doesn't run it, but he's the chairman of the board and he's the essentially chairman of the board of the PIF a.k.a. governor of the PIF, and that's who they're sitting down with. So I can't send Monahan. That would be silly. The only guy that Jay can meet with is Greg, and that's not going to do anything. So that's not even something to entertain. So I'll send Ed, who I've already told that this is, or excuse me, Jimmy. I'm going to send Jimmy Dunn because I trust Jimmy, and he's good. He knows what he's doing. He's an expert. I trust him. We're friends, and he's going to represent the PGA Tour because I put him on the board. So he's now got credentials. So he's, you know, John Adams sailing off to France to try to raise money for the American Revolution. Trust him. Because he's there by himself, essentially. He's leading, not literally, but essentially. Ed's not there, I don't think. Right. And Jimmy sits and, down and, with uh, uh, Ru, uh, Rumayan and has the conversation. Yeah. And these were all set up at Augusta, as we talked yes. about. And, and, and I don't think, and Jay Monahan wasn't in the room. You know, it was Fred Ridley, it was Jimmy, no. it was Ed, it was a couple guys from Seven. You didn't want Jay Monahan in the room. Guys. You wanted no, Jay to it, have deniability, so to speak. It, he didn't need to be there. It, right. And, and eventually they said, Jay, you know, here's what we talked about. Here's what's going to happen. Keep this under your hat. And, and you're going to come out of this smelling like a rose after you make a few, you know, re- if you retract a few comments and talk about how we're going to save the game. I love because every 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 time you retracted something, it was followed up by we're going to grow the game. and save yeah, yeah. The game. <laughs> can, can I put a, a can I put a, a, a smidge more detail on that? Why Jay was not at the small table down Please. in the wine cellar? Because. In business, and Ed, obviously, Jimmy, these guys are smart guys in business. And what you can't have when you're pitching this idea in more detail now to the RNA, USGA, maybe PGA of America was there, is Jay sitting there, because we're why are you doing this, Ed? Would be the majors asking, because the PGA is bankrupt. We're bankrupt in 12 months. No cash. Oh, 
then everybody knows what that means. So, okay, good reason. And if Jay's sitting there, everybody looks at Jay and they start, Jay, is that right? What, what do the books look like? What, what, can you fix it? Why can't you fix it? What happened? They start asking him lots of questions and he can't claim ignorance because he's the CEO of the stupid thing. He has to answer the questions. Uh, well, here's why we are faltering. Here's what's going on, blah, 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 blah. Now they all have a suspicion as to why that is, but you don't want that guy there because you don't want him to answer questions. So you don't have him in the courtroom for that. So psh, Jay's not there. That's why, among other reasons. Yeah. He wouldn't add anything anyway. So right. so yeah, I love it. I love it. That's the meeting at Augusta. Then what do they do? They dispatch Jimmy Dunn to, was it Milan? Is that where they met? I, I with, you read with Milan, I think I did. Milan Correct us. Milan, uh, audience, please Boston comment Boston. if if it wasn't Milan. They I think London was the second meeting, and they played right. golf. Um, yeah. Nice that uh, Mr. Al Ramayan plays golf. Um, that's convenient. Um, so they meet in London. I think Milan was the first one. I had another question for you, Dark Star. Who do you think made the phone call or email? Whatever, probably phone call to the Piff to get the ball rolling with the PIF, to set up a meeting. An underling of whom? Or was it the guy himself? Was it Jimmy Dunn or Ed Hurley that picked up the phone and called somebody they already know at the PIF because of the M&A experience they've had over the past 10 years? They've bumped into people from the PIF all over the place. Who do you know at the PIF? Oh, I know this guy, that guy, you know, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I, I think um, it was somebody, like I said, in the wine throw at Augusta. It may have just been Fred Ridley, who's, you know, as a, as a complete mm, third party. I think party. it was Jimmy. But go ahead. Why would it, I think it was Jimmy, and I'll tell you why I think that, not Ed. But go ahead. Who do you think? Well, yeah, I don't think it was Ed. Ed, Ed is sort of the guy behind the scenes running things. Mm. Uh, but I, I think it, I, I would probably start with a third party. I would start part with a Fred Ridley just because he's a, he's a neutral, a quote-unquote neutral third party who – is somebody you're going to take the phone call from. That's true. Them. They would take Fred's call, but it would be odd. It would be, well, it depends on who Fred would call. If he called somebody down in the organization, but see, Fred doesn't have those types of connections, I don't believe. Um, this is a business deal, and PIF is a, an, an, it's an acquisition. for it's a, it's a private equity firm, essentially. So they have all yeah. kinds of VP-type guys uh, running around doing stuff. So I think it was Jimmy Dunn, and I think he called somebody that he already knows. Maybe a couple of somebodies, but you know, he just called him, whoever it was. It was not uh, the top. I don't think he, I don't think he would have called Al uh, Ramonian the first, well, but maybe he did. Obviously, didn't. the, the M&A guys have cer certainly done uh, Plenty. Of, they, they've they danced around each other. They, are, they yes. all know each other. Who do you know there? They, they all know each other. Yeah. So, but, but the there's way, an interesting the way, point there. But go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the way I would do it is is Fred Ridley would make a phone call to, in the point of saying, "Hey, uh, Jimmy Dunn is from is going to talk. Jimmy Dunn is going to be following up with you. Uh, you know, Fred's just going to set the table to say, "Hey, you, we, we would really appreciate it if you take these take this phone call, and that leads to the meetings." Uh fair, fair enough. But I, I I don't think that's how it happened. But uh, so yeah. Dunn calls. And the reason that Dunn would do it, if you're wondering, audience, at least in my mind, and not Ed Hurley, who's really the first mover and the guy that's making this happen, the chairman of the board of the PGA Tour, is deniability, or not deniability, but uh, in case it doesn't go well. I mean, there is a small chance, not a big one. In this case, we already know what Liv and the PIF want. They've already said what they want. They want to be part of the global ecosystem of golf. They've already made that clear. So if it were to not go well, then Ed can say that it, well, it was Jimmy that you know it wasn't the, the chairman of the board of the PGA Tour that got denied. So that's nice too. You want to have a little bit of room for your top guy to save face. Um, but they were all pretty confident. So Jimmy makes a phone call, gets a meeting going. It all gets set up. Jimmy goes off to Milan. Let's just say that that's correct. I hope it is. Um, with his small team of people that he usually takes on M&A deals. So what's that? Maybe seven or eight people of various skill sets to have this meeting with the PIF, the governor, Aunt Yasser, and his team. <laughs> now, I did point out one small thing that I thought was funny about that meeting taking place wherever it did, the first one, any of the meetings, actually, which is what, Dark Star? What did I say that um, uh, Rumayan uh, travels with that, of course, very few people do in the business world? What does he have? Well, he's got a massive security team. He's got team. a security team. <laughs> 
So he comes in, it's like head of state. You're not a head of state, but it's like meeting with the secretary of state. You're like, who are all these guys with the dark suits, with the earpieces? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's Yasser's security detail. Oh, yeah. You know, which, you know, it's funny, but it's also I got when you're sitting in a meeting with, you know, around guys with guns, which I've done a couple few times. You know, it was all friendly. I, it, they were our side. <laughs> It gets your full attention, uh, just because it's different. It's it, these guys are carrying weapons and wherever they met, and it's just interesting. I mean, they were in the background, of course, but it puts you into an interesting physical feeling when you're negotiating that kind of deal. And it, you know, it's like stepping off of a 747 versus a you know a Cessna Citation at the airport. And you're just like, oh my my jet's not as big as yours. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, okay, it's just it's it's just deal making. It, it's not terribly material, but it is funny anyway so they meet with him and he he comes in like you know the secretary of state you know and that that's just set to ten and then the meeting happens and uh blah 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 we i think we we need to skip over that part that's another show it's like how do we think that first conversation went i think we should skip it for today sorry i hear the moans and groans but it's a whole 45 minutes probably and we don't want to have that kind of time here but you want to you want to go on you got you want anything to add to that or i want to move on to the uh purpose of nuco which is what they're putting together no go ahead yeah let's because we, we should uh we're going to have a ton of things to talk about uh no as far as the future of the, of the the merger if you know yes so yeah nuco yes that's, and we have whole, let's just throw in a side so people that have made it this far into the episode good thank you um dark star is in an undisclosed location He's not on video today. We have the photograph there, but he's an undisclosed calling in from an undisclosed location. Make of that what you will. The purpose of NUCO. All right. Well, the NUCO is the you know unnamed uh, to be determined what they're going to call this thing that the Saudis are putting the money into. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this because you guys watching this show have probably read at least that much in the press release. The Saudis are going to throw in a bunch of money. Nobody knows how much, and they're going to combine golf operations. The PGA Tour is going to stay as is. Live is going to stay as is. Everybody's going to stay as is. So that's the way I'm reading it. I think that's fairly straightforward in the press release. Um, so it's going to be an umbrella organization that does what? What's it doing? If the three tours are continuing to do what they do, what's the umbrella organization supposed to do? What's the purpose of it? You want to take a shot at it, Dark Star? Well, they need to coordinate. I, I think, well, this is what I hope they do. My, my most important thing is to coordinate the schedule and sponsorships, et cetera, because I, I think – and just as a quick aside, I know you hate when I do this, but one of the failings of the PGA Tour is they substituted quantity for quality, just an obscene number of events, which nobody had any interest in. And yeah, so Minor detail. Yeah. Oh, they don't watch yeah, those. Minor, minor. Yeah. Fair enough. But, so the purpose of the NUCO is to do what? Because it's not going to be staging tournaments. Obviously, if the PGA Tour live and, and European tours are staying as is, more, more or less, staging tournaments, and the majors are a separate entity, obviously, separate entities, uh, the four majors, what's NUCO supposed to do? Well, they... Yeah, so they could coordinate, like I said, the schedule and which players go where. Correct. They're they're setting the the they're setting up the interleague play. Let's call it that. Is that fair? Because we have an episode yeah. out there that you did back in July of 2022 that, that talks exactly like that. those are the, those in our audience that know American baseball. That's how we see this shaping up more or less. Um, you know, you have two leagues, three leagues, I guess. But no, DP is still the European Tour is still not going to be a real player unfortunately um so you have the you know the american league national league and they're going to compete against each other mostly within their own ranks but then they're going to come together for interleague play and that's what the NUCO is going to do they're going to coordinate that because and i know you have a lot to say about scheduling dark star rightly so the calendar is only so big you can't yeah. you can't have as many tournaments as you possibly could want and there's certain tournaments that are going to be elevated even further, like the Players' Championship. I think uh, somebody's already said. I, I believe um, Al Ramayan has already said, Yasser Al Ramayan, the governor of the PIF, that they're going to send a, a dispatch of top live guys to the players. 
and that's going to be part of this interleague thing and that'll be cool that's super cool so it's a great opportunity we haven't talked about whether we think it's great or not uh, this this joint venture but yeah it is it was necessary yeah. so um but the purpose of nuco is to coordinate interleague i wrote it down overall schedule of events so that everybody comes out in a better place <laughs> which in part and parcel to that of course is all the golf operations of nuco will get OWGR points or whatever the points necessary. So the majors will recognize all the live guys, which is what live wanted. That's really all they wanted as technically from a golf operation standpoint. Hey, we want our guys to play in the majors to be eligible to play there just with points, <clears throat> just like everybody else. You got it. No problem. And that's probably the only thing that the PGA tour had to offer for this deal to take shape. Anyway, what's that cost? What is speeding up a couple of, can we pivot to that? What's that's probably next on my list. Yeah, we can go to there next. Uh, why do this if you're Piff, Dark Star? Wow. Well, Piff needs the. Well, what is Piff looking for? What's the well, whole concept? And you have to tie it into the Vision 2030 plan that they have. Right. Well, they, they need the access and the exposure to American golf, which uh, which yes. leads to yes. American corporations. Well, let's get that to get that second. But first, technically speaking, from a golf operation standpoint. What does Greg want? I mean, Yasser would be sensitive to that. Hey, you know, first thing, the only thing we need down at Live Golf down there is majors. We need the major, we need access to the majors. Can you do that? You know, can you do that? Yes, we can do that. Okay. So that's part of the deal. True? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's, that's really the only technical point. Um, Dark Star is about to tell you the, the, the big points that the, why Piff does this at all, which is really why is Piff investing in golf? at all and then and there's an interesting couple points there for our detractors detractors of live golf detractors of the saudi arabian money etc i have a excellent point for you coming up so stay tuned it'll be here in about two minutes probably so yeah we want owr points guys get the major. okay yeah done 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 that's why they talk to the major guys at augusta at that uh, small table meeting now dark star what is why is piff doing this in the first place why do they give a rip about golf about pro golf globally why not invest in formula one or something else which they've already done why not put more money sure. into soccer which they've already done yeah well it's it's like i said it's, it's access to american access. corporations access to sure. global m a right global i mean M&A. well why is that why do they want that and how does golf do that well it gives you access to the, the people I mean, you need this a people driven M and A is a people driven market. I, I don't think a lot of individuals understand that. It's it's getting individuals together that run major corporations, not just corporations. You also have to have the governments on your side to have these um they need approval. Mergers happen. Yeah. Right? Some of them need approval. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they need approval. It it and, makes it all go faster. I hear people saying, Well, the Saudis can get that anyway. In London. Yeah, and M and A happens in New York and London. True, yes, so. for the most part, true. That's very true. Yeah. Um, the big ones and San Francisco to some extent. The and of course, let's not leave Tokyo, Singapore. Yes, true, 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 true. But those are the London and New York would be the the power centers. Um, why do the Saudis care about going faster? Because I hear people out there. I can hear you saying, "Well, the Saudis, the PIF. I mean, they have tons of money." You know, they're probably more like a trillion dollars. They keep throwing around six, seven hundred billion in the PIF. It's probably more like a trillion. And it's getting growing every day because um, price of oil is up in the last couple few years. So um, why are they interested in speed? It's technically, now we don't have to go philosophically, but there's a technical reason they're interested in speed. And Vision 2030, I won't leave you hanging, Dark Star. Vision 2030 is uh, the Crown Prince uh, MBS, uh, Mohammed bin Salam's st- plan. That is his plan that he's pushed, been pushing for five or six years now to basically remake or remake, evolve the Saudi Arabian economy and country into something that it wasn't before. And he wants to get that largely done by 2030, hence the vision 2030. And it's transformative. And that's a separate show as to how challenging that is in, in that part of the world. But he's doing it. And speed is important because we're already in 2023. So if the PGA Tour can offer 
speed, meaning two, three years. I can save you two or three years on this process. First of all, the litigation is going to take two, three years, and we can slow that down. That could take more like four or five years, and that's a long time. Then it's 2027, 2028, and 2030 is right around the corner. We can get rid of that. We can make you part of the OWGR tomorrow and speed up the whole thing. How about that? And of course, uh, Yasser's like, absolutely. That'd be good for PIF and good for Saudi Arabia and our plan. And I'm sure that was the first paragraph in the meeting in Milan. And what are the Saudis really after, as you already said, access. So access to the global, you know, good old boys and good old girls network that run all these companies um, is what they're after. And golf is the place to do that. They have a global forum now to do that. And members of Augusta, you know, members over there, members here, people that like to hang out at golf events because they're easy to hang out. You take four hours to go play golf. You get to meet somebody. You get a relationship going. It's just a great, easy way to ease your way into lots of different places quickly. Formula One, sort of like that probably, but golf's better because it's four hours. You get to ride in a golf cart with somebody. You really get to know them. And the golf is character revealing. True? I didn't even really think about that. But does golf yeah. reveal character? You know, obviously, Jack Welsh talked about that in his book. Um, it does. Yeah, very, very much so. Very it doesn't so. build character. It reveals it. Now it probably builds it too. But it's it's a great game from that point of view. Is one of the reasons it's a great game. Um, so that's what the Saudis are after. And for, you know, let's, put, let's talk about the money. Because let's do that right now. Because that's next on my list. We're really deep into this thing. We're running out of time. It always goes too fast. How much money are they putting into New Co, Dark Star? How much money... Does all this cost this speeding up and access and all that stuff? I've ser- no. I've seen some ridiculously silly numbers thrown around by people that know uh, the, that should know better. The reality is, well, yeah, I mean, I, I could do a whole sh- show on just Rich Lerner and the things he says that are so obscene, but well, silly, ridiculous. silly, no, ridiculous, silly, silly, and ridiculous. But you know, it's a rounding error for him. Whether it's you know, I, I, I have no idea. Yeah, initially, it's going to be let's call it five hundred million, less than, around a billion. It's it's nothing to have to buy the initial access. I, yeah, I agree. I think it's a small number, relatively speaking. So yeah. the whole yeah, thing you're, 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 you're talking about what Rich Lerner said. It's like they're going to put twenty billion, thirty billion dollars in. It's like it's not, they're not they're not buying an oil company. They're, yeah. they're right. some PGA golfers. Right. They're not. No. They're not buying the world's foremost battery maker. Um, they're buying a little people, people silly forget, golf the organizer. Is the, it's the greatest sport in the world in that regard. Is you go into somebody's club or a course that's already there, and you don't pay for anything or buy anything. You know, right. on a relative basis, they run a they run a, a golf tournament is zippity doo dah. They never even charged for golf tournaments back when I was young and went to a couple of them. Correct. Well, it's a, they're, 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 they're tournament organizers. That's all they are. They organize tournaments. They put the, they so they pull together a purse from sponsors and put it up and they say, "Hey, any pro golfer can come and compete for the first prize, second prize, third prize." It's that's all it is. And they turn it right. into a tour. And before Jack and Arnie built the PGA Tour, it didn't even work that way. Um, so they don't. They're not really worth intrinsically much of anything. You know, they're exactly. they're worth know how meaning they know how to organize events well, fine, and they have connections. They have corporate sponsors that they've had for a while, but those are all, those two skill sets are not all that difficult to replicate. They're, you know, they're, they're worth something because of speed, only because of speed, meaning we'd rather do it quickly versus spending three years figuring this out. But, you know, Liv could just go hire the, the key guys that run tournaments for the PJ Tour. They probably have. I know they have Formula One guys that are in the depths of live organizing these events, but event organizers, I mean, come on. So it's not, it's not that. It's really the OWGR points that live will pay for and, and live because they want access as their main goal to the global golf world and what that means from a business point of view. Having the PGA Tour continue healthy is, is in their interest. And they've always said that. It's in our interest to have the PGA Tour continue. We can't have just one league. We need multiple leagues to make this interesting, and we want golf to be interesting so that we continue to have our deal-making platform. Simple as that. Not complicated. And what's that worth? The PGA probably asked, the tour probably asked for a billion, and you know, Yasser smiled and said, mm, we're thinking more like 500 million. 
Okay, you know what? There are, maybe it's seven hundred, and it's in tranches. Let's make that point crystal clear, Dark Star. Are they going to give them yeah. the money all at once? No, of course not. Nobody <laughs> ever does that. Here's your money. Yeah. No, it's in tranches. It's like any other investment. We're going to pledge to you seven hundred million, five hundred million. It's in that neighborhood, and you're going to get the first. What do you need? You know, first, and this is the line from Limitless. We'll be opening a line of credit for you because you'll be wanting some things. You know, once you have a deal in concept. So they might already be opening a line of credit for the PGA Tour if they're that desperate for cash. And maybe they are, probably not, because Ed's smarter than that. So they have cash probably through the end of the year. So there'll be maybe a debt facility for the PGA to pull on that PIF is going to put together and be behind. And uh, and they're going to put in some money to Nuco that the PGA Tour can draw on to keep its operations because combining golf operations. The interesting part is, will they run Liv's money through there? That's a really good question. No, probably not. I, why would you? I, that'd be so. How much money is going to go in there, and where is it going to be gone? Those are all the details that they're saying they're going to work out over the next couple three months, and those are phenomenally interesting and somewhat complex. How you're going to do that mechanically? How's the money going to move? Because live has to, or excuse me, the PIF has to fund live, and it's it probably going to do that. Well, I don't know. I, 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 that's an interesting question. We need to get a CFO on here and really yeah. walk through that. How's it going to work? But that's how it's going to work. It's going to be in tranches. What does that mean? But guys in business already know, for those of you not in business or that kind of business, tranche means how much I'm going to give you each time. It's just a piece of the pie, right? I'm going to give you a slice of pizza. I'll give you another slice of pizza. But before you get the next slice, there's metrics. Oh, no, no. You don't just get the next slice in three months. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Performance metrics. You have to hit numbers or goals. We're going to give you the metrics that you need to reach with the first tranche. Let's say they give them $100 million. Now you have to demonstrate that you're using that hundred million the way we want it used for the health and well-being of your product or to expand it. And here's those metrics. And that's what they'll go over quarterly when Al Ramanian shows up to the policy board meeting because he's now joining the PGA Tour's policy board. And there's only five people on it. Ed, we already know. We've met him in this episode. Uh, Jimmy's there. Jay's there. That's three. Now you're going to have Yasser there. And there's just one other person and his name is up there, but we don't have to go look at that. Maybe they're expanding to six. I don't know if they're adding or substituting um, Aramanian to be on that board. But he's going to sit there on the PJ's policy board, board of directors, to watch after his investment. Absolutely. Where are the metrics? Are you meeting the metrics? Well, the next round is not coming unless you hit the metrics. Now, they can change their mind. They always have that flexibility. Say, you know what? We'll give you the next $100 million. You tried really hard. You almost made it. But you didn't quite make it. Uh, but we'll give you the next 100 and then, you know, please, let's refocus. In fact, I'm going to have one of our consultants come in here and work with you to, we, we think it should go this way. Well, this is how we think the business should run. We think you should have another tournament with Liv over in Singapore, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to bring somebody in from Liv to help you with that. And the PGA Tour guys are going to be, what are they going to say, Dark Star? Because this is the next hundred millions on the line. Okay. No, they don't have, well, they don't have a choice. It's silly. They're it's gonna either. say okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> the money that so this ties into that other point. Go ahead and make it because I know you want to. Um, let me get my computer back on. Uh, the they they went out of their way in the press release to say that the PGA Tour will be um, picking the majority of the board seats at Nuco. Yeah. Well, does that, that matter? That, no. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Does not matter. Not really. No. Because look at any investment anywhere, the, the private equity firm, the investor, if it's, if it's a big enough investor, gets a seat, maybe two. But they don't need the majority of the board. They have the money. Performance yeah. metrics, tranches, that's how they control it. You, right. don't, get the exactly. next, you don't get the next 100 million until you do what we tell you. Well, what if we don't do what you there. tell you? You he's don't get the next 100 million. To watch his investment. He's sitting there on the board to watch his investment. And, and, yes. you know, of course, it's due, silly. Due diligence. Why yeah. didn't Faber <laughs> ask these questions on CNBC? These are basic, you know, investor 101, M&A 101 questions that Ed and, mm -hmm. and Jimmy and Yasser, they all know these things backwards and forwards. You know, it's silly. We don't need all the board seats. We don't need that. You can, yes, we want you to do these things. That's what we're agreeing to. Here are the metrics. Here's what we're all agreeing to. And the money is predicated on that. And we're going to do five tranches or three or seven or how, who knows. But those are all t tied and controlled to certain things that they're doing. And if they don't do them, they're not going to get the money. It's that simple. Yeah. Makes total sense. I, I, 
I can't comment on why Faber doesn't ask these questions because we'll get banned from all social, all media. <laughs> what what question is that? <laughs> no, no, I can't comment on why Faber didn't ask appropriate questions. Oh, well then don't. If you, I don't want to have to edit. Uh, <laughs> golf mini All right. Oh yeah, well, let me get that at the end. I got to run. Um, Sorry, we got to do more shows. Well, go ahead, say what you want to say, and then I'll wrap up my side. No, I, I, my wrap up is, you know, next I want to talk about the schedule. I want to talk about the players and how that's going to work, and then I'm sure you want to talk more about, you know, the the money and where it goes and how it flows. Um, but yeah, the, but I don't have any other comments then at this time. Just, I would like to say at the end here that uh, the detractors out there. Um, Let's let's say the Brandles of the world. Big loser in this was Brandle, um, but he built his own little. He dug his own hole, didn't he? Um, the Brandles of the world. Okay, I'm going to try to say this in short amount of time as possible. Saudi Arabia and the PIF are throwing money, a lot of money, at the PGA Tour and golf that everybody in this conversation cares about, or they wouldn't be watching, right? Okay, good. Where are they not throwing? $5 billion, let's say that's the total earmarked for this type of project in golf. Where are they not putting that? What two countries are they not throwing that money at, Dark Star? Yeah, let's China and mm. Russia. Ah, they're not throwing the money there. They're throwing their money at sports in the following ways. Soccer, they own Newcastle United in the Premier League in England. They're throwing it at their own soccer teams there in Saudi, and they're bringing in major players to do that, Ronaldo amongst them. And they're throwing money at cricket in India uh, and golf. And that's it so far. Oh, Formula One. A, Formula and, One. And they throw a lot of money at Formula One. And guess where there's no longer a Formula One race? What two countries had one that they don't oh, have? Oh, lay it on me. Uh, uh, same answer. China and Russia. China and Russia. Yeah. Now, they no, moved Russia to uh, where? Georgia? Where'd they move that to? Well, they don't really move them. They, they've all there's. Where always, was the tournament on the Caspian? Where was that? Or the race? That, that was it was Sochi, and they where? That, and, where and, that was is, that in Georgia? Where was it? No, the Sochi was Russia, and they moved one to um, Azerbaijan. Yeah, Azerbaijan. There you go. Yeah. It was on the Caspian. I knew that. Um, yeah. So anyway, they're not detractors. Brandel, call us. We can have a chat. We can do that. You're a smart guy. We just don't know why you went off the deep end so far. You were trying to save your job. Granted. But come on, you're not stupid. Well, the, Saudis, you know, sadly, the Saudis are not throwing money at China, and they're not throwing sadly, money at Russia. They're throwing money at the U.S. and the West. Golf is a Western sport. Yeah. We're all on the same <laughs> side politically, okay? Let's all take a minute. It's not every country is the same, of course, but... And I think what <laughs> you're getting at here, what, what I want to say is what you're getting at there is... You know, the Saudis side with us and are actually an ally of ours. They've picked a side. The Saudis, and yeah, they, they talk to the Chinese. Of course they do. They're doing business around the world. Of course they are. They have oil. Of course. They're doing all those things. But who have they allied themselves with politically forever? The West. From the beginning, the Brits helped them help, help the House of Saud get to be in charge of Saudi Arabia in the 20s and 30s of the, 19, of the 20th century. Fine. Great. So the Brits were there first. Okay, then they've stayed that way. They buy American weapons for the most part. They practice with the American military. It's a Western ally, and they have all the, the largest single reserve of sweet crude in the world, and that's important that they are strategically allied with the West. And golf is a Western sport. It all ties together, doesn't it? Yeah, and let's be honest. They've seen, the Saudis have seen what happened in Dubai, and they're following that model. And what people don't realize, because we don't teach history mm -hmm. anymore in this country, you know, Saudi Arabia is made up of many, many different people. And they also want stability in Saudi Arabia. It's not exactly the most stable region. There's a lot going on. They have a lot of work to do. It's why this 2030, yeah. the Vision 2030 is an interesting. It's the home of... Of Islam, let's. They have the holy uh, cities. I guess we'll say that. I'm not an expert on that, uh, but they're there. So they, they, yeah, and part of the vision 2030 will wrap up is um, to be the crossroads. So you know, sort of going back to the spice trade or whatever. If you want to go back that far, the, Saudi Arabia also sees itself as uh, in the new economy, so to speak, where it's doing more than oil. This is what this is all about uh, for them. 
um, as the uh, trading crossroads because they're sitting in the middle between Asia and Europe and that they could be, you know, uh, an interesting place to have tourists, to have business deals, to have a, uh, an equities market, which they built that's already up and running. Um, kind of like Dubai is, you know, the Emirates are serving that through Dubai right now. But Saudi Arabia is bigger and has more money, obviously. Um, so, you know, do they see themselves as a port? Do they see themselves as just the, the new New York of the Middle East? I don't, I don't know that. Um, Dubai certainly is that. Um, but that's their yeah. vision. And, the, and all, my only point was they're not spending the money with China. They're not spending the money with Russia. Yeah. So everybody take a breath and reevaluate and your, I, your and I guess point. since you brought since you brought up Brandel I will wrap up the show the only person worse than Brandel is the Eamon Lynch character on the Golf Channel who literally said it's okay to do business with Saudi Arabia but it's not okay to be an employee like the players of live I, I just I, that I, I don't even know where to begin hmm. to say that how ridiculous that statement is well it's naive isn't it um, yeah, it's purposefully. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be gone. And, and sadly, Brandel, who, as I've always said, I used to like, and yeah, I don't see I he Brandel was very popular. Anymore. Well, the golf yeah. channel is probably going to go away. Maybe not. This actually is probably really good for them. Not probably. This certainly is a. They're a winner as a as a network. But Brandel may not be. I don't see how you can keep Brandel there unless he does a apology to her. I don't. Yeah, I don't think you can keep Randall. I don't think you can keep Amen. Obviously, they made the announcement on CNBC because they their ratings have suffered tremendously. So maybe they're also going to try to help the NBC Sports Network. Who knows? Well, remember the anyway. PIF is interested in it being healthy. They want a healthy golf, pro golf. So whatever contributes to health um, is going to be in their interest, which is good for everybody that's in the game now. I mean, it, as we said when it started, Dark Star, and then we have to go. Um, somebody throwing two, three billion at golf, at pro golf, is not a crisis, <laughs> as they said back in April of 2022. It's a miracle. It's not a crisis. It's a miracle. That's for go so anybody who's in golf, let's talk about the players. Player number 225, Grace and whatever, who was really upset at that meeting. Um, yeah, this is great. There's money. There's a ton of money. And you, you've extended. Tiger's gone as a player for the most part. And that was a really special 20, 25 years and that's over. And now we need something else to keep it going. Cause it's not, it's not healthy. We talked about this in the master show. We won't do it now. The game is not in a good place. It needs a capital infusion, but with that capital, it needs ideas. It can't just be throwing capital at the same old stuff. That's not going to work. That's just going to keep it on life support and nobody's going to do that. So you got to hit some metrics. You got to have something new that's different. You got to appeal to younger people. You've got to do that in order to make the sport work because the audience that loves golf is older and dying. They need to get their grandkids to love golf. And that's not happening in the numbers that we need it to happen. Simple as that. Right. It's a simple and, formula. And, and I'll say this in parting. You need quality, not quantity. And you need better coverage i hope they learn from lives coverage so i'm gonna leave <laughs> that is the way to go last. streaming is the way to i'm go. gonna leave my last that'll be my last comment dr dark star is out thank you dr dark star and b team is out we'll be back as soon as we can with the follow-ups there's a lot to talk about here we don't charge for our videos we don't tease you with some of the information and then make you go somewhere else and buy the good stuff we want to help we want to help so we just give it all to you right here and if you'd like to maybe give us a buck or two, that would be awesome. We're on Venmo. It's super easy. Just hit us up there, connect, and whatever you, whatever you want to do. We love it. We appreciate it.